guys we're back if you're new to my channel my name is maya and the semester is over we're not gonna talk about the semester we're not gonna talk about school it's just not a topic that i want to discuss but in that case it's summer and it's time to dive into the reading and i've been so excited with my reading vlogs and i feel like i finally found my niche on what i like to film and what i enjoy editing but yeah if you don't know me my name is maya i live here in las vegas i'm moving so soon i can't believe it but for now a very anticipated book that i've been wanting to read i'm gonna do a reading vlog on it because ever since i did my last reading vlog with book lovers i'm like obsessed with that video so I've been waiting for this book to come out for so long because I saw her book on TikTok, The Perfect Marriage, and I read it. And once again, it was another thriller book that made me fall in love with thrillers. So she, oh, this is a hefty book, but she came out with One of Us is Dead. And I kid you not, I don't even know what this is about. Like I have no, no clue. Oh my God. Okay, so I read The Last Mrs. Parish, and the author blurb this book. As well as Samantha Donning? <laughs> oh my god. Okay, anyways. Yeah, I literally have no clue what this book is about. So I'm going to read the synopsis with you guys. This is like a... She's like thick. She's a heavy book. Yeah, I gotta get all my receipts out. Because I returned a book. So I don't know if the video will have gone up. But when Anaisha and I went to Barnes and Noble and we picked up that one book that was talking about like hell and like Lucifer and all that type of stuff yeah I went back and returned that book and basically got this book for half off but one of us is dead by Geneva Rose it says opulence sex betrayal and sometimes friendship can be deadly meet the woman of Buckethead a place of expensive cards huge houses and competitive friendships Shannon was once the queen bee of Buckhead, but she's been unceremoniously dumped by Bryce, her politician husband. When Bryce replace her, replaces her with a much younger woman, Shannon sets out to take revenge. <laughs> Crystal has stepped into Shannon's old shoes, a young, innocent Texan girl, and she simply has no idea what she's up against. Olivia has waited years to take Shannon's crown as an unofficial queen of Buckhead. Finally, her moment has come, but to take her rightful place, she'll need to use every backstabbing, manipulative, and underhanding trick in the book. Jenny owns Glow. Wait. Yeah, Jenny owns Glow, the most exclusive salon in town. Jenny knows all of her clients' secrets and the darkest desires, but will she ever tell? Amongst these women will be clever. Who amongst these women will be clever enough to survive Buckhead, and who will wind up dead? They say that these friendships can be complex, but no one said that it could ever be this deadly. Hang on, I need to go yell at the dog for a second. So yeah, I'm super, super excited to read her. Um, I'm off until tomorrow night, so hopefully this could be like another book lovers where we, um, you know, get through her in one sitting kind of. I don't, I don't really have any plans to like leave my house or anything like that. I think Gigi and I were supposed to go to brunch today, but I don't think that's happening, which, you know, I don't mind. I can gladly go get some Chipotle and just have a book day because I'm so excited. I'm kind of sad because it's not a paper bag. I don't know, y'all. I used to be like an avid hardcover stand in high school. But like now that I'm older, I'm more of a soft cover girly. Yeah, anyways. We have this hefty book to read, y'all. I'm so excited to read her. She feels like she's going to be like... Not cute, but I just loved her first book. Like, five out of five stars. Like, literally had my jaw on the ground. And, like, I don't know. It's something about, like, domestic thrillers, like, about housewives and stuff like that that just really does it for me. So, yeah, we're going to read the first chapter, and then I'll tell you guys how I feel. 
You know what, I'll just make it a thing since I did it with Book Lovers, but I'll just read Jace the first paragraph. So this is from Jenny's present perspective. I spent thousands of hours working on these women's. I've primped, waxed, cut, painted, and spray tanned, powdered, and massaged them. I know almost every inch of their bodies, but I also know their demons, their deepest, darkest secrets, the things we try and bury beneath the surface so as not to show in the world the doppelganger lurking within us. So I'm surprised that something like this has happened. Not even a, not even the slightest. I figured it would. It was just a matter of time I readjust myself crossing one leg over the other beneath the table all I see is the second paragraph that says across from the table and he says detective Frank Stanford what's happening what's the drama okay so I've just finished the first chapter and I find it hilarious that like the detective is kind of just like oh like how do you know everything about them like are you like, a therapist or something and a girl knows, like, if a girl has a salon that she goes to on a regular basis, like, she's going to talk to her hairstylist. Like, hairstylist, nail techs, eyebrow techs, lash techs, everybody knows, like, there's a different type of bond that you have with those techs. Like, the girl who does my waxes, like, literally from day one, we were, like, besties. Like, she knew everything about me. So, it's very interesting to see that the detective is, like, what's going on what's that i don't know but yeah so far i just need <laughs> excuse me but yeah um but the last paragraph says no don't let them fool you detective individually they individually they're genuine and they can be kind but when you put them in a room together these women are downright toxic and sick chapter says three weeks before the murder so somebody got murdered and i'm like oh my god obviously it wasn't jenny like, let's just, based off of chapter one, we know that it's not Jenny. So, I'm very interested to see how this is going to go. And I'm very excited to be doing this reading vlog and to be spilling the tea to you guys because I'd be wanting to tell people my thoughts, like, during the book, but then I can't tell Anaisha because I want her to read the book eventually. And, you know, like, other people really don't care. So, I know you care if you're watching this. <laughs> okay, so it's 9.38. I've finished reading chapter two. A little longer than I expected for it to be a thriller but that's besides the point it's still good still amazing I'm still very much so hooked on page 12 part of page 13 which is the start of page 3 chapter 3 but so far one of the girls I don't like I don't like Miss Olivia Miss Olivia is like a backstabbing B-I-T-C-H like she basically so Shannon's husband as I read in the synopsis left her but Olivia and Shannon were supposed to be friends and now Olivia doesn't care about Shannon because Shannon's not married to Bryce anymore and I guess Bryce makes the most money out of everybody so whoever is Bryce's wife is like you know that girl but Olivia has been trying to take Shannon's place so Olivia really doesn't care and she's just like I'm gonna be the queen bee now <laughs> this girl I really hope Olivia's the one that dies cuz what are you doing but yeah, I really just don't like her. And, I don't know, Jenny seems cute. You know, just a little salon girl. Just, you know, knowing everybody's tea and stuff like that. So, I don't know. I don't know. Right now they're having a meeting about Shannon. All the elite women. All the upper elite women. Which is, like, insane to me. Like, I wonder if this is, like, real life. Like, if people really live like this. Like, I know we see it in the books. And I know we see it in the movies. Like, Real Housewives and stuff like that. But is this real? Because that's obviously reality TV and that's not real. So I don't know. But I'm going to make myself a matcha and then I'm going to do a time lapse of me reading for an hour. And we'll see how far I get. Okay, I'm freaking out, I'm freaking out, I'm freaking out, I'm freaking out. I have to tell you guys, I couldn't even let the time lapse go for a whole hour. I'm freaking out, I'm freaking out. So, if you plan on reading this book, don't... Dig. Spoilers, spoilers up the freaking wazoo right now. Basically, so, there's like five, there was like five people total. I'm just, there's a lot of people, there's a lot of wives 
there's a lot of drama basically we met karen shannon crystal and olivia and jenny so far there's two other girls but i really just don't think that they're that big of factors whatever the case may be and so what's happened so far is shannon the ex-wife of bryce i'm pretty sure that's his name I'm pretty sure his name is bryce um they all go to Jenny's salon, and Jenny's salon is like, you can get everything done. There are waxes, eyebrows, spray tans, everything. And in order to continue to be a client, you have to have eight services a month. So Shannon hadn't been going, obviously, because of the divorce. So her thing was going to get terminated. But then she went and got all of her services done in a day. And of course, the new wife, Crystal, shows up. And then she's like, oh, did you know my husband was, you know, did you know he was married when you were effing my husband and i'm like oh the tea is hot the tea is piping hot mind you olivia walks in and olivia's like basically trying to take shannon's life because like olivia wants to be queen bee or whatever and she starts being like super out of line super disrespectful mind you she didn't already took this woman's chair position behind her back like shannon doesn't even know she's not the head chair lady anymore so all that happens and then jenny ends up like kicking out olivia and is like no like this is like not okay like blah 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 which snaps for jenny for like standing up for herself because olivia thinks that she could just run everybody but so rewind olivia's chapter because like they're each chapters from each person's point of view and olivia's chapter is basically like her being like some like sex demon or whatever and like her this guy like coming and or them having like a very i forgot like the term of it but like it's like some sex term like dominatrix i think or something like that when like the woman is just very like dominant and the man is like very submissive like on his knees like everything like she's like whipping him and like all this type of stuff but now oh my god so it flips back and forth between timelines between jenny talking to the detective and then like what's actually what actually was happening and so the last thing that the detective says is did you know about affair and then jenny laughs and says which one and so now we're on the scene with karen i don't know why my camera just shut off like that but we get to the scene with karen and she's talking about like her and her husband and she gets home to her husband and stuff like that but she hasn't had sex with her husband in six months and then she goes as he left the room i noticed the red marks on his back uh on the back of his calves on his neck poor guy he worked too hard at the office and at the gym but I know that he was having an affair with Olivia. I, not him having an affair. Mind you, I'm going to go back and I'm going to read you the, where is it at? I'm like literally so shook because she would make this man have like safe words. And when I tell you, this safe word mind you he gives her a two thousand dollar like allowance or whatever and so the first like safe word phrase is karen's a bitch and then chairman olivia petrov or i guess that's her like last name or whatever and then like there's another one i don't even know but yeah i'm like i mean it's not confirmed but she definitely didn't say like her husband or like say his name or anything like that and i just know I know it's Karen's husband and I'm like the tea the drama y'all and I'm only 52 pages into this book we're only 10 chapters done and I don't have any words I don't I don't have any words like this book is getting finished today like th there's no choice I uh, Jenny Rose I don't know what she be doing but she be putting crack in these thriller books and <laughs> I can't believe it all right just a little update um they're all about to go to the gala and i really feel like shit's gonna hit the fan like everybody's gonna be in the same room at the same time and some shit is really gonna hit the fan at this gala i don't know what it is but the ex-wife shannon is like giving the award to her ex-husband while his new wife is there it's just drama if you ask me all right so we just finished chapter 15 and i'm really confused so we're at the gala and i obviously said something was going on i was convinced and i'm really confused because obviously like he's remarried he doesn't want to be with her anymore but 
of course, Queen Bitch, Olivia decides to tell Shannon right before she goes on stage, like, oh, congrats on your last night as chairwoman, like, blah, 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 after, like, Olivia's, or after Shannon's already tipsy and stuff like that. And so then Bryce, her ex-husband, is talking to Shannon and is like, I'm glad you decided to go through with this. Uh, Bryce spoke to his large beaming smile, never letting it flatter that uh, falter I can't freaking read and then she tried to say me too blah 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 and then he glances down at her and says perhaps we can work things out if this goes well and I'm like what does he mean by that and so her and her psycho delusional mind thinks that they have the possibility of getting back together but I don't think that's what he meant so I don't know what's going on but um she's about to produce him with the award and i feel like shit's about to hit the fan all right so we're 32 chapters in now and there's still lots of drama lots of bickering and um basically crystal has convinced not crystal olivia has has convinced crystal that her husband dean is like being abusive towards her even though we know that he's not and she's just a psycho and is having an affair like i hate olivia so much <laughs> but they have uh manny's and mimosas which i think is just like so cute like they shut the salon down and it's like just for them and i'm like okay that's that life's kind of cute whatever like without all the drama and stuff like that but like it's so much drama that's making my head hurt like why are women like this like what is freaking wrong with you like excuse me if you have a husband have a husband love your husband be with your husband you don't love him anymore get a divorce like why are you having an affair oh also karen is now having an affair with one of the salon workers and they were just making out in the salon so she's a lesbian or bisexual i don't know i don't want to put a label on her but um that seems to be what's going on with karen so not only is karen's husband having an affair she's now also having an affair why are we just not divorcing i'm not understanding also shannon like embarrassed herself again and tried proposing to bryce even though he definitely said that he didn't want to be with her and basically threatened her life and said that he would hate to be a widow so that's the tea. I'm gonna make myself a cheese board and draw myself a bath and see how much reading I can get done in the bath because I went to Lush the other day. No cap. You're the one I could love forever. Mm. Who I know who could love me better. Mm. You could ask me whatever, whenever. Mm. Got me feeling as high as a tenner. No cap. No cap. Alright y'all, I look like a crazy woman, but this is literally my like favorite, favorite, favorite Lush face mask. But cup of coffee, it's currently like 2.30. I'm gonna get in the bath and let it charge, but I will get back to you guys after I take my beautiful purple bath. Alright, so it's almost 4 o'clock. Um, we're on page 189 and I don't really remember the last part that I told you guys about but basically somebody broke these two guys had broken in to the salon and ended up like choking out Jenny and it was like a whole ordeal and also for whatever reason all the husbands decided that they were gonna take out a bigger insurance policy on their wives which I'm like no somebody's they're somebody's planning on offing somebody for all the husbands to plan to you know like put out more insurance on their wives i guess i don't i don't really know it's very confusing to me but yeah also um olivia walked in on karen and keisha the salon girl or whatever so now someone knows and i knew that was gonna happen i literally wrote it in the book and I knew that they were gonna get caught and of course they had to be caught by Olivia and I really hope Olivia's the one that gets murdered because I really don't like her but yeah those are the vibes we've got about a hundred ish 
pages left to see what's gonna happen but stuff's just not adding up to me and also Jenny is realizing like the salon like can't be her whole life because she doesn't really have a relationship with her sister and she doesn't have a love life or anything because her whole life revolves around the salon so I guess we'll see what happens next been there, done that. We've been where it wasn't good, but good enough for our love. Fresh Words cannot explain how much I despise Olivia and would like this woman to die. I'm just knowing that she's behind Shannon's date not being there. I feel like she catfished her. And I wanna kill her. I wanna kill her myself. So Miss Olivia finally goes coming to her. She was being a total bitch to the server at the bar, trying to throw her black Amex and was like charge her or whatever. And like you know, the bartender was like, you don't know, you don't want to know how much like your bill is or anything. He she's like, does it look like I need to know how much my bill is? Charge the effing card. Tell me why I got declined. All her cards got declined. And not this girl doing a dash and basically leaving her friends to pay but yeah this girl finally got was coming for her she also found out that her husband is basically like a drug dealer and he had basically messed up and so he had to afford put the bill and now they're broke gotta love karma gotta love it this is all wrong and all so messed up but basically Olivia is now blackmailing Karen into 50000 freaking dollars to keep the secret of her affair. I also forgot to mention that the life insurance policy that the husbands took out on each other and everyone, $10 million. $10 million. Somebody's getting off and I need to know who it is. Okay, definitely wasn't expecting this twist i don't know but it seems like the husbands are into some really shady stuff i don't even know how to describe it but basically crystal just went into bryce's office which nobody's ever been in because bryce is like super secretive about about everything but she's going and looking at these videos that are on his computer and there's videos of one of the husband of uh, excuse me of olivia's husband dean and girls like in a truck or something and they're like oh god like we lost another one therefore there's they're dead and six girls were dead inside of this truck i don't know and then Somebody says, fuck Dean, all these girls are pre-purchased. You're paying for this one. Uh, you're paying for this mess one way or another. The voice off the green says, Dean, hug his head. Do you understand me? The voice questioned. Dean looked up and staring uh, just to the right of where the video recorder was set. Yes, got it. Good. I wouldn't want Olivia to end up in that pile too, he said with a laugh. And it was Bryce's laugh. So obviously Dean and Bryce are in on whatever, whatever this is. And I'm very concerned. And one of these ladies are definitely about to end up dead. Okay, so I'm sorry, there's so many names. Crystal Set decides to go and tell Olivia like what their husbands are doing, and obviously Olivia doesn't care and she's like, ah, you shouldn't talk about your husband that way. I'm never gonna go against my husband. Blah blah blah. blah. And so Crystal is like girl what is wrong with you she leaves but then one of the goons who broke into the salon is there and then crystal figures out that olivia is the reason why jenny got hurt so then crystal goes to shannon's house and like shannon like she just goes and she starts crying and like shannon just brings her in which is so big of her you know like an ex-wife letting in the new wife like cry on her shoulder and she spills everything to her and like they're both like super upset about everything that happens so they're gonna like try and figure out a way to you know handle shit and um miss olivia decides to go to bryce's place and says oh i want in she she does not care about all the women who have died like none of this stuff she just wants to end the money and she tries to blackmail him for five hundred thousand dollars just after she decided to blackmail karen for fifty thousand dollars like girl if you're broke, just say that. 
My God. All right, I'm freaking out a little because we're on page like 283 and there's 309 pages. And they're at the Halloween party, which is where whatever is gonna go down, goes down. And Crystal and Shannon are in cahoots with each other. They were trying to get, you know, Bryce's, the rest of Bryce's information off the computer, but nothing was there. And Shannon had hid under his desk because he was coming and he pulled out a gun and said that it was happening tonight. That's what he said on the phone. And now I'm like, is he gonna shoot Olivia? What's, what's going on? Like we literally only have this left and I have anxiety. Oh my God, I think Karen is about to confront Mark about the affair. Oh my God. <laughs> Okay, I'm just gonna read it to you guys. Okay, she said, that's it, I'm confronting him, I declared. Don't, it's not the time, Keisha urged. She grabbed my arm, but I shrugged her off. I turned back to her for a moment, and now and never, I said, and I strutted towards the mark. Keisha tried to stop me again, but I was determined. I looked back and saw that she was falling behind, so I quickly, I quickened my pace. We need to talk, I said forcefully to Mark. He looked at me and then took another drink about what he was so nonchalant in his answer. About you fucking Olivia, I nearly yelled. Mark tried to quiet me as Dean was standing only a few feet away chatting with a couple of guys he hadn't heard because if he would if he would have killed Mark right then and there. Mark tried to pull me aside but I didn't budge. Tell me the truth. Lower your voice. He glanced around again making sure no one was listening. Nothing happened with Olivia. Don't lie to me you asshole. Did Olivia tell you this? Jesus Christ. Even after I fucking paid her. Oh my god. I couldn't believe it. The irony of it all. A small chuckle worked its way out of me and then more and more until I was full on hysterical laughter, doubling over dramatically. What's so funny? That evil bitch. I was struggling to speak in between laughing. You paid her for sex and I paid her to keep her mouth shut. I said, connecting the dots from she was playing both of us all along. Damn. So, uh, looks like he's trying to apologize and she said don't bother i'm leaving you he's like don't do this i promise i'll be better i love you karen i'm not in love with you i'm in love with somebody else i want a divorce i am shook <laughs> i have no words so it's back in present tense and jenny's there with the detective and then as like she, as Jenny's about to start talking about Bryce, uh, somebody comes and says, Sir, it's Bryce Madison, blah, blah, blah. And now Jenny's annoyed. He's like, Oh, God, what did Bryce do now? Like, as soon as she's about to start telling stuff. And then, so then she goes and she bangs on the door and is like, What's going on? And she's like, What did Bryce um, do? I asked, completely ignoring his question. He didn't do anything. He's dead. She says, My mouth falls open and I take a deep breath. A sense of relief rushes through me. It's over. It's finally over. I walk back to my chair and take a seat. My shoulders slump and I just stare off into nothing. What the heck? I'm confused. What happened? Okay, so she just showed the detective the video of Bryce and Dean and the carrying the dead bodies. And then he says, why didn't you show me this earlier? I didn't know if I could trust you. Bryce had police on his payroll, but now that he's dead, it doesn't matter who killed him. Dean Petroff, he walked right into his office and shot him in the head. He was sitting across from Bryce's body with the weapon in his hand when the police arrived. I'm not surprised they say Bryce killed Olivia, didn't he? Yes. Shit, this is bigger than I thought it was. I was convinced one of the housewives did it. How did Olivia get wrapped up in all of this? I think she blackmailed the wrong person. Wow. Wow, 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 wow. Okay, I'm gonna let this marinate and I'm gonna get back to you guys when I'm done. I need to record myself because I think a plot twist is about to happen. What the heck? No way. No way.
Okay. Okay. If you ever, if you plan on reading this book, please stop here because this is like spoilers. Spo I knew Geneva Rose. I knew it wasn't done. I'm, I, I have no words. These housewives set the husbands up. I have no words. So basically, they set it up to make it look like Bryce shot Olivia. And so he was going to jail. But then Dean was like, oh, you kill my wife? Okay, so I'm going to kill you. So then he killed Bryce, and now Dean's going to jail for killing Bryce. So now two people are dead, and one person is in jail. But what actually happened is Crystal hit Olivia in the back of the head with the bat, and they didn't kill her. But now all the housewives, including Jenny, are like dragging Olivia's body. And tell me why. Olivia has the audacity to, like, you know, wake up because, you know, she only got hit in the head with the bat and goes, Jenny, what the fuck is going on? What happened? I just stared at the um, the wall opposite, never acknowledging her, and I was tired of answering to Olivia. We were all tired of her, which, as they should, and I was really hoping it was going to be her. Listen up. And the, mm, I hate her. Listen up. I know the other woman eat out the hand of your, eat out the palm of your hand, but you're nothing but the fucking help. Now answer me when I talk to you. Insignificant piece of shit. What the fuck did you do to me? She screamed, putting her hands on the gash in the back of her head that Crystal left behind. I sigh and begin to laugh. She didn't get it. What the fuck is funny to you? You're gonna start answering my questions or, or what? I stood, uh, flashing Bryce's gun. She gasped and closed her mouth. I know what you did. She brought she brought her bloodstained hand to the front of her face to look back at me. Jenny, I'm sorry you weren't supposed to be at the salon. I was just there to scare you and remind you that I made you. I pointed the gun at her directly. Do you still think you made me? She shook her head. I lowered the gun and stood back. Good. Olivia pressed a sigh. What are you doing? Putting us out of your misery. I aimed the gun at her. She gasped. Jenny, please, and before she could speak, before she could beg for her life, I fired off three shots two to her chest and one through her head the bright red spot is across her face and chest contracted beautifully with the white skeleton bones of her costume i gave olivia her final touch up her beauty glow her favorite shade one last time is it done keisha called from outside i walked out of the shipping container and closed the door behind me it's done what did she say she said enough i handed the gun to keisha she nodded how do you feel keisha <laughs> wrapped her arms around my shoulder <laughs> the fact that everybody was okay with just offing her is insane to me <laughs> not the book ending off with <laughs> my mouth curves into a large buck buckhead smile please that is it shouldn't be surprising what we did what i did i just did what i always do i took care of my clients <laughs> y'all i have no words. I have no words for this book. I didn't even describe to you guys everything in detail. I mean, I tried as best as I could, but you guys need to go pick up this book. I literally, I have no words, and I'm really sorry if I spoiled the book for you, but this was just a reading vlog, and it's so fun to, like, just go back and look at my reactions for these books, but... I see I have no words like Geneva I that I wasn't expecting I definitely was not expecting that to happen like she really just be doing it for me every single time so obviously this is a five out of five star read for me and I'm really hoping that in a book slump after this because she was a really good but it's five o'clock it hasn't even been 12 hours so yeah that's the that's the tea that's the video for today i hope you guys enjoyed my reaction to one of us is dead please go pick it up because it was such a good book i really hope that you didn't watch the whole video if you didn't read the book but yes these reading vlogs are being really fun for me and it's only five o'clock and i feel like i might start another one right now so yes look forward to lots of reading vlogs this summer because i have nothing else to do with my life so see you guys in the next video <laughs>